So today I was talking with one of the ultrasound fellows I work with um, for our emergency department about uh, tamponade. And I think this is an interesting case to talk about some of this. So um, we're going to go through this images and hopefully you find this helpful as far as understanding some of the topics we'll cover. Um, obviously, this is not comprehensive, but going to discuss some of the pitfalls and how to determine. So this is supposed to be a parasternal long axis. This is off plane. And sometimes when we have pathology, it alters things just a little bit. So we know this because we don't see the aortic root or the left ventricular outflow track. And then we are seeing what looks like the right atria. We can see the tricuspid valve. So this could be altered a little bit by fanning superior. Actually, that would probably bring in more of your left ventricle, get rid of this right ventricle side of the, the heart as far as the view goes. Still, we can use this, this here. And what we see is our left ventricle here, mitral valve, left atria, orient ourselves. This is at the same level. So this is right ventricle, tricuspid valve, right atria. And we do see, we don't see the descending aorta. So it would be nice if they would have increased their depth down here at the bottom of the screen. But we can see a pericardial fusion that comes here is along the left ventricle. And it does look to be circumferential. In point of care ultrasound, I personally think that we should just be looking, if it's circumferential, it's a moderate size diffusion. But by definition, typically it has to have a centimeter uh, depth in its thickest portion. This one may or may not when we look at the scale over here uh, to the right, but um, it's borderline either way. So this could be between small and moderate. Just visually, I would call it moderate given that it's circumferential um, just for me. Now, if we, we get a second image, same thing. They archive two of them. That's okay, um, but really not getting any more data than we did in the first one. Um, and we all, I am going to back up here. We do see that the LV inner wall, it looks like it has good compression. We can also see the mitral valve anterior, mitral valve wall, or leaflet is hitting the septal wall. This is a normal EF of the left ventricle. The right ventricle is hard to determine EF on this view, given that we don't usually see that well in the parasternal long, which this is supposed to be. Um, but uh, we do see some up there, and it seems to have decent function, but we'll keep watching that. As we come to this, here's our left ventricle. It'd be nice if the gain was turned up a little bit so that we could see the image a little bit better. And then we do have the right ventricle out here. Notice that it's a little bit different shaped. It's hard to tell if it's compressed with this pericardial effusion out here, but we do see the pericardial effusion come around this way and down through here. So that again, it is circumferential. It is borderline on that one centimeter. If we just look at it, we could freeze it and then measure that uh, if we'd like to. <clears throat> In this image, I'm going to try to adjust something here real quick and uh, bring this up so we can see it just a little bit better. So, sorry, wrong way. Right here, we do see the right atria. So we got left ventricle, left atria. There's a little bit of a five chamber coming in with the aortic root here or the aortic valve, right ventricle, right atria. And I want you to pay attention to this right atrial wall. And it has, it is, has a different motion to it. It might have some systolic collapse. So remember the atria contract during diastole and they relax during systole. What I'll say is this looks like it has collapsed to me uh, on visual inspection just simply because it does not, it doesn't maintain its shape as atria typically would. Uh, if we look at the walls over here, like you don't see this wall flipping all the way into here and you see this one almost hitting the septal wall here and that's just not a normal motion. And as it relax, it does kind of have a delay through that spot there. We see that delay right there. That wall is going to flip out and it's, it's kind of concave there, um, or convex, I guess in this case, but concave into the ventricle. And that, um, that makes me think that there is right atrial systolic collapse that it should not be present. Now, the right ventricular free wall, I don't see a lot of collapse there, but um, we'll see that better in a subxiphoid view. We may see it here occasionally. View. I'm not sure this adds a lot. This does get a little bit more of a five chamber view, but I don't really see anything different here that needs to add to this exam. We're going to go to our sub xiphoid. What I would say would be nice here is they're a little off plane. You can see through here that the left ventricle looks round. Again, the left ventricle is not round. To correct this, typically you're going to rotate your probe back counterclockwise to get it. What we can look for in this view, we could if we saw the atria really well, if we saw a true four chamber view. 
If we saw a true four chamber view, we would see our atria here and we could look for systolic collapse of the atria again. Here we're going to pay attention to diastolic collapse. So remember in diastole, the left or the right ventricle, sorry, and the vent left ventricle are both relaxing, but we're going to see if this wall has normal motion all comes out at once or if it looks delayed um, and compressed. And in this case, it to me, it looks normal. It looks like it's all coming out into that area uh, pretty uniformly. Um, so this looks, looks normal. It would be nice in this, you'll see a lot of hand motion uh, if the, the operator of the scan would leave their hand nice and still once they get the view and uh, archive this just a little bit better for us. But I don't see any diastolic collapse of the um, RV there. Uh, IVC, again, this one's off plane, so we're not seeing, we see a portion here and a portion here. This is a rotation issue. We should be able to see the IVC extend clear out here, and that would tell us that we're truly in plane. Um, so it would be nice if you do that. Those of you doing uh, in a cardiology type form would have this image flipped. But what we can see is right here at the paddock vein coming in is that between here and there, there's not a lot of collapse. So this is a plethoric IVC. And so when we look at this overall, this is again, they're fanning off plane. We've got to be careful that that's not an alteration of the patient's respiratory pattern. Um, and again, we see this here. Now they're fanning through it. We'd, I prefer a rotation of the probe to get in plane to see here. So when we look at this exam in particular, um, we do have a small to moderate pericardial effusion given that it's circumferential. There is some right atrial collapse the IVC is plethoric, which is a very sensitive or the first finding. So, but then there's no right ventricular free wall collapse. So this for me is equivocal for tamponade. For those of you doing more advanced things like tricuspid inflow variation or mitral valve inflow variation, this would be a great patient to do that in. And hopefully in another video in the future, I'll be able to cover it. But for me, this um, should raise your spidey senses and get you moving towards whether they need a... Uh, urgent pericardiocentesis, but at this point, I don't think they need emergent, but um, you can definitely get your procedural sin, or if you do these, uh, that would be a consideration, but if the patient's stable, I'd probably wait and do that under a more uh, controlled environment myself. Um, and if they were even in tamponade, I do want to remind you that the first step is to give them fluids, um, especially with the heart functioning as well as it is. We're going to try to increase this, uh, that preload, which will increase the right-sided heart pressures, which will further improve their cardiac output. So just remember, um, if it is tamponade, that's your first solution to buy you time. And in this case, I would say it's equivocal, um, and, but may need an urgent pericardiocentesis depending on the story.